Are you ready to take your engineering career to the next level? Earning a master's in industrial engineering from the University of Louisville can strengthen your leadership skills and open new career opportunities in just 10 courses. In UofL's fully online program, you can take just one course at a time, whenever it's most convenient to you, making it easier to balance life and education. Work with the MSIE department to devise a plan of study that fits your educational needs and time frame. And there's no GRE required. Make your next career move with this online program at louisville.edu slash online. This is Problem Solved, the IISE podcast, where we talk to industrial and systems engineers about their work, ideas, and solutions. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Problem Solved, the IISE podcast. I'm David Brandt, digital strategist for the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers. And today we're talking about our upcoming IISE annual conference and expo taking place May 21st through the 24th in Seattle, Washington. In this episode, you're going to hear from three conference veterans who will share their annual conference memories and inspirations, along with networking tips to help first time attendees get the most out of their conference experience. And if you'd like to learn more about the conference and our plans for Seattle, you can visit the conference website at www.iise.org slash annual. Hi, my name is Jeremy Knapp. I am um, coming from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I work at Stratasys as an application engineering lab manager. Uh, I've been part of ISC for about 18 years, and I am one of the three program chairs for the uh, annual conference this year. My name is Renee Thiesing, and I am the vice president of products here at Simeo. I have been a member of ISC for, um, I think, about 15 to 16 years. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in IE and also a graduate degree in IE. I look forward to talking more about all of the, the things that I've picked up at the conferences along the way because it's been uh, fun each and every one. My name is Kaz Takeda. I have been a member since the mid 90s, I want to say. So I, um, you, you guys were born, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so a little about 35 years ish. Um, I'm an IISE fellow. I've uh, been involved with the leadership team for quite a while and the, and the international creation of the uh, industry advisory board, um, served as an RVP for the Western region, uh, chapter president, uh, that's still involved with our Los Angeles chapter. Um, first conference I attended was probably 1999 in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, it was a very fond memory of that was that uh, at the conference, there was a book on the table that was from Lillian Gilbreth, who has been one of my IE heroes. And I was surprised because I thought I knew all of the books that she had uh, published and talking to IIS back then, IIE at the time, I found out that uh, Ernestine Gilbreth was, was still alive and she endorsed the book. Um, and I basically bought a book bought that book and found er, found Ernestine Gilbreth, who lived up in, in the middle of California and uh, became a pen pal with her. And actually, I got uh, Ernestine to autograph and sign the book for my daughter uh, because my daughter and Ernestine or, or Lillian Gilbreth have a lot of similar characters, characteristics. And uh, and we became pen pals for a while uh, as a, you know, a fun little fact was that one of the books from the Gilbreths was Cheaper by the Dozen, which is a story that I told uh, my kids, that, you know, like, what does dad do? And it's pretty hard to explain what dad does. So Jeremy, I know your son probably will get into having 12 kids and all the crazy things they did. And uh, what was kind of fun is that, uh, that Ernestine offered to autograph books for me. So several of the very close leaders at the time that I've worked with, uh, Ernestine uh, and my, my own team was uh, very was very giving and and offered to autograph several copies of uh, Cheaper by the Dozen. And, uh, and, and uh, so there's several leaders out there that have an autographed copy of that book, which is kind of cool. 
That is really cool. Renee, how about yourself? How long have you been coming to the annual conference? I think the first conference I attended was in Montreal. So I believe that was 2014-ish maybe. And, um, and you know, my memory was I knew nobody. So I just knew I wanted to come. Um, I, I went on behalf of work and um, showed up really by myself and um, a little nervous about what do I do at this conference? You know, I wasn't familiar with it, but just kind of felt at home, if that makes any sense, because being an IE and I just could get a sense of, okay, you know, I, I, everything I'm hearing, whether it was a talk or whether it was side conversations or walking through the, the vendor, you know, room that these are conversations that I want to be part of because that they kind of spoke my same language, right. That being an IE. And so while I didn't really engage as much as I did years later in the conference, that was the first time I said, I need to get involved. I need to become active because I know I'm going to like this organization and this conference. And so um, therefore I set off to do that. So then the, when I showed up in subsequent years, I actually knew people and I could engage. And so, um, so yeah, Montreal. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So mine was San Juan, which I think was the year just before that San Juan, Puerto Rico. And I remember uh, kind of that same sort of feeling, right? Like, all right, there's a lot of people here that have some, you know, common threads with myself. And I've been kind of uh, heavily involved with the local Minnesota chapter for several years. And it was really interesting to see a, a set of folks that were interested in kind of volunteering and giving back that I could find some very similarities to. I remember we did a bolt training on that first Saturday morning, and it was uh, really interesting to hear all these uh, folks talking about uh, how how they can lead. Uh, and uh, it just, I don't know, it resonated with me. Um, and then the rest of the conference, I mean, you're in San Juan, Puerto Rico, so there's nothing bad to be said, right? There's tons of good things to see and eat. Um, and yeah, it was a great time. It was a great experience. I mean, what is, what is Volt training? Can you tell the group? Oh, so I'm going to probably draw a blank on the acronym. Kaz, can you help me out? Volunteer leadership. Volunteer leadership training. I think they do it every Saturday. It's geared to the, the, the professional chapters and the students, right? To get them engaged, to help them understand what things work well and kind of, uh, it's a good opportunity to hear how you can take uh, lessons learned from one uh, kind of organization and bring it back to your own if, if that's something you're interested in doing. It's a great kickoff event to bring people together, especially those who are coming in early to the conference. And Renee, thanks for liking Montreal because uh, one of the, like Jeremy, Jeremy's running uh, Seattle. Uh, Montreal was, uh, was, was my conference. <laughs> and although I have two conferences, I feel, because I had the Montreal conference that I led and then Anaheim. As those who know me, I have a 22 and a half year relationship with uh, with Disney, and uh, I was I was very very blessed to be able to have the conference at the Anaheim at the at the Disneyland Resort, and I understand it was the number one attendance conference too. That was basically in your backyard. I was going to say, while Montreal might be my first, I think my favorite might be Anaheim. Maybe it's hard to say because they're all they all have great memories, but um, that was definitely a that was definitely a fun conference. So speaking of kind of favorites, what is your favorite part about the uh, annual conference? Well, for, for me, it's just getting together with my, my peers. I mean, as industrial engineers, we tend to be very social and, um, uh, and we enjoy our, 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 you know, the people we hang out with, we think alike and such as that. Um, I'm very blessed to have an amazing amount of people that I've known for decades and now from Roman, you know, to, 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 you know, uh, Bill and, you know, to Jeremy and, and uh, Renee. Renee has been a guest speaker in my class uh, before. And um, uh, there's so many different people. And it's all about this meeting people and getting together. Um, and we get to share ideas. We get to share the soft skill issues. That's uh, I, I, I tend to um, gravitate toward those of uh, different leadership qualities and different challenges as, a, as an IE leader um, inside organizations and what we're facing from recruiting, from keeping our industrial insurance motivated, uh, all the different pieces on it. And, and I'll pick up some of the technical, the technical attributes of, of uh, what other people are doing new, but to me, it's mainly about the people. So kind of to Renee's, you know, experience with Montreal, do you have any kind of suggestions on how to build that and meet people? Either one of you guys on, you know, how do you, 
you just walk up to somebody and say, hi, my name's Jeremy and I'm an industrial engineer. How do you do? Or like, what's, what's your guys' approach? I mean, it, dep- it depends on your personality, right? I mean, I, I personally don't have a problem doing that, but that's just me. <laughs> so I'll, if you're brave enough and you feel comfortable, I think the environment though does present it with a very comfortable, but you know, at, at the networking event, for example, right? We always have a big networking event and I would, I would just, you know, get my plate of food and I would just say, Hey, I'm going to walk up to that table that looks like there's an empty spot. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to say, Hey, I'm Renee. Like I'm new. And never once did anyone look at me cross-eyed. Like I was crazy. Right? Everyone is excited for new people, right? We like new, we, you know, we want to welcome people. We want to share kind of that excitement that we all have. So yeah, I think that's the first thing. But um, for me, I think the way that I got connected the most and met people was also attending town hall meetings. So I think that's, that would be my advice to people is um, there's all these town hall meetings for the different groups within ISE and they're open. You don't have to be a member. That, that was something I questioned at first, but just show up. And even if you just sit in the back and you kind of get a, an idea of what is this group, right? Whether it's the um, industry advisory board, which I know the three of us are all involved in, um, or if it's, you know, the town hall for, for modeling and simulation, which I also attend, just to get a sense of, um, is this something I want to get involved with? Meet people that might be doing similar things to you. It's a great environment to, I think, throw yourself into. I oh, totally agree. I love the idea of it was just like randomly sitting next to somebody. And I'll do, I'll do that also. Um, I've also, if I saw a guest speaker, I'll look them up on LinkedIn uh, and uh, and invite them as a contact. And of course, it's not hit the in the standard clicking the button. I put down, hey, that, I saw you at the IE conference. I thought you had an awesome, an awesome speech. I'd like to you know connect with you. Um, so that's always great. Uh, again, uh, I, I used to have super social. So sometimes we'll have several, we'll call it uh, non, uh, non-sanctioned events. Uh, and uh, if we get connected with that, uh, so many students, I, I, I would encourage students to have the courage to just go up to Renee, go up to Jeremy, go up to me, go to any professionals and just say, hi, uh, you know, I am X and I'd like to understand what you're doing. And uh, we love talking about what we're doing. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I, I, I like your idea, you know, going up to people, I, that's a good idea. You know, if you're, if you're in a talk or you're, or you listen to a panel and, um, and if, if, even if you don't have a specific question, but you just feel connected and you want to follow up, you know, just hang out in the room after, go up to the speaker or the speakers and introduce yourself, maybe exchange a business card or like connect on LinkedIn. And, and then, you know, even, even going as far as saying, you know, Hey, let's, let's connect over coffee. You know, can we continue this conversation later? You know, do you want to meet, you know, want to meet for breakfast tomorrow and, and dive into, you know, sharing more about what you talked about. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities, kind of like you said, cause these ad hoc moments um, and just put yourself out there because everybody wants to connect and, and grow and learn. So Renee, kind of the same question, but maybe a slightly different spin. What, you know, I, I'm assuming you go to a couple of different conferences a year, right? What what differentiates this conference maybe to other conferences you've attended? Yeah, that's a good question. I do. I do go to different conferences. I think this, what I like is that, um, you know, we are all, all the, we're most of us there, but not all. Um, you come with this industrial engineering mindset. So we look, we tend to look at um, things from the same perspective, but yet there's so much diversity in at the conference that I find, you know, I come from, from simulation, right? So, so we look at the world solving a lot of problems from a simulation or an optimization standpoint, but I love running into people who look at problems differently, right? And then I get that at this conference. Um, they use all different kinds of IE techniques that I could either solve a problem that way or incorporate into SIM. Um, and then also the diversity spans across different industries too, right? And, and so you have, ac- you have academics who are doing research. You have the students who are just you know, learning and soaking it all in. And then from an industry perspective, you know, you have, you have folks in healthcare and you have people in services and hospitality and manufacturing. And it's really great to sit back and see, wow, even though somebody in manufacturing is their job is very different than somebody who works in a hospital, they deal with the same issues. It's the same, a lot of the same problems and we can take the same approach. And, and I just love kind of learning from about all these different perspectives. And I don't, get that same diversity at other conferences. So mm-hmm. that's, that's something I look forward to every year at this conference. How about you, Kaz? Do you go to many other conferences? 
I do, but again, it's all about the people. So at the other conferences, it's very very tactical. If I'm wanting to learn something, I'll I'll go there specifically for that. Um, um, and it's much more trade show style. The uh, with the with the IISC conference is much more about the people and like minded stuff and and. And that's what gets me excited and you know, why I, I like going to them. Um, I, the only challenge of it is that the conferences traditionally fall right over my wife and my anniversary. <laughs> so that gets complicated. So, so if, you, if you don't see me on May 19th, that's because uh, I'm spoiling my wife and we're going someplace and not attending some IIE function that night. Spoiler in Seattle. <laughs> that's it. Do you know where you're going already? I Luckily... We're blessed with having a lot of people in the Seattle area. It's a little fun little story at Disney. Um, I'm known for going out to lunch with people. Again, it is like a almost like a mantra for me, like never go to lunch alone. I always always have an opportunity to to have lunch with either a peer or or maybe another person in another organization or line of business at you know for my work. I just just the opportunity to meet them. And the seven of my my partners. Um, most of them were industrial engineers. We would go to lunch together and five of us live within two hours of Tacoma, Washington. So that's, so it's kind of interesting. So when I get up to Washington, uh, there'd be a lot of old IE buddies. Some of my buddies back from UPS days now work at Amazon. They work at Starbucks. So I, there's actually a pretty large network in that Seattle area. So we might have, so we might have some pretty interesting, uh, non-sanctioned activities after hours. Nice. Um, so, you know, the, the, the conference has always has a highlight on around annual, uh, the speakers, right? There'll be three speakers again this year. Um, I think uh, there's somebody from Boeing. I think there's somebody for medical. I'm trying to draw a blank on the third one. Isn't it Nordstrom Supply Chain? Ah, uh, yes. Nordstrom Supply Chain. Looking forward to that one. So, yeah. Yes. There's some really interesting ones. Uh, is there any past, uh, you know, speaker that you guys remember or inspired you specifically? You, you have to acknowledge Tim Cook, right? <laughs> Last year. <laughs> what kind of resonated with you or what what do you recall from his, his conversation or his presentation? I love the fact that his background in IE and, and just he acknowledged like all the skills that that he was able to apply throughout his career. And, and even, even now running one of the biggest companies in the world, he taps into, you know, his, the people and the process and the technology and, and just all of his training and the, the mindset, you know, to, to Kaza's point. Um, and I just, I just like the visibility of, you know, the value of, of our, of our background, our education, our approach to problems that he elevated out to the world. So, yeah. Yeah. How about you Kaz? You know, I'm drawing up, like, I'm hard to remember the name. There was um, one back in Phoenix, and I can't remember their name, and they did a great job of introducing us to mind mapping, which was, uh, was fun. The, uh, the other one was um, the, the retired Air Force general. And uh, when I found it fascinating, uh, it was an extra touch. A, um, I'm associated with USC, so that was kind of fun uh, that Dr. Moore got her over there. But also one of my mentees, who's an IE, um, she was, she's in the Air Force. And uh, she was having some, you know, as being enlisted in the officer training program, she was having uh, the standard, you know, like, like oh my God, what did I get myself into? And uh, and just having listened to, um, you know, that that, that keynote speaker, uh, I was able to get engage with with my mentee about about her, and I think they actually connected together, just kind of you know, offered to to chat about what's it like to be an officer. Uh, a female officer inside of uh, inside the Air Force going through that program. So that was that was kind of cool. So it was another, again, personal touch behind things. Every time I read the like biography of the speaker, I go, OK, that doesn't really apply to me or I'm not going to find it interesting. And I'm pretty much across the board every single time I am blown away by their presentation, by themselves, you know, like. I don't know. I've, I think that uh, if I were to uh, give some advice, if you have the, if you, if you think, man, I don't need to maybe go to this one, right. This is not going to resonate with me. I think I would highly recommend still attending and see, see if it actually does resonate. Right. Um, they're, they're the speakers are top notch. Um, you know, again, Tim Cook, like you said, Renee was kind of to me, like it's all the same things I've heard, you know, Renee say or Kaz say or anybody else I look up to, but it's kind of like one of the t 
top in our profession, right? Like in terms of where they, he's kind of come and gone. And, and I was just like, wow, okay. That still resonates, right? The basic level. Yeah. And, and there was also, by the way, I can't, we can't pass up the opportunity to talk about, was it, did you line up the Disney speaker? The guy, the, the one I'm, who I might've had a, a you might have, influence yeah, on that. But, and, he, and he laid out the whole vision and the future of the, of what now has come to, to right. I mean, it's, it's live. Mm-hmm. I can't remember which it's Disney, but um, that was really cool just to see again, the future of Disney was such a big company mm-hmm. and then how much, you know, planning and execution and then IE is behind that, you know? Yeah. We've had two Disney speakers. So, you know, one was Brian Betts, who you probably remember from Anaheim, who did a great job on it. And we gave away um, the little, um, what do we call those things? The little fuzzy creatures. <laughs> I can't remember what we used to call those things. And at Orlando, we had Kathy Kilmer, who, uh, Kathy, I, she's always has a warm part in my heart. Um, and with Kathy, uh, we actually had stopwatches made. So every chair, uh, in the in the conference hall for her keynote had a Disney branded stopwatch. So that was a lot of fun. And then of course Mickey introduced her, which was, you know, and if you know Kathy, she's a great Purdue um you know representation and the cheerleader for 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 uh, for Disney and for industrial engineering. But it was so fun to watch her and get everybody so excited about uh, about what industrial engineers could do in in the service industry. So kind of moving into this year, is there a speaker or an event that you guys are particularly looking forward to in Seattle? Here is a great talk with Jeremy that, uh, that we're, that we're look, all looking for to see. <laughs> I believe the cause will be there as well. If we're, we're doing some self-promotion. Uh, Renee, how about yourself? Well, 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 continue with your self-promotion. Talk, what, what exactly are you guys going to be speaking on? Cause I'll let you take that one. So, you know, from, you know, from my career of, of making smiles at Disney and delivering smiles at UPS. Um, now I'm in the uh, the dental industry uh, with 3D printing. So now we're printing smiles. And Jeremy and I were thinking about uh, kind of p- pulling together a a, uh, a panel kind of describing additive manufacturing. So the, like the ability, because we're both in a 3D printing business effectively now. And it's just amazing. Of It's a disruptor. You know, it's not very time, many times that we get an opportunity to be part of a an organization or, or even like an industry that is disrupting the way things have been done before. Um, you know, and it's, so we're going to kind of uh, just talk about uh, what IEs have done and, and what we see is going to happen in such a disruptive industry. There's so many things that we can do as industrial engineers, and it's such a disruptive, potential disruptive uh, technology that it could touch logistics, it can touch manufacturing, it can touch healthcare. And so there's a lot of different uh, verticals or avenues that it could uh, go down. And industrial engineers right now are playing in few and far between. And so I think it'll be an interesting conversation uh, between some folks that have have uh, been dabbling and at it for a bit and uh, and getting kind of that perception of people that maybe don't know a ton about additive and the question and answer piece of it and and kind of say, where where is it going? Right. So it should be fun. I will be there because I look forward to that. Um, that's exciting. And I think it's also good sort of put my hat on as, as a, someone who might be starting off in their career, whether they're like young professional or student to say like, is this something I want to go into? How can I, how can I add value in additive manufacturing? What is additive ma- in manufacturing? What roles do IE play? So that, you know, I bet that would be an exciting talk for them as well. How about you, Renee? Will you be giving any presentations? I am speaking too. Um, so I'm going to be on a panel with a couple folks uh, talking about g- the general theme of, you know, um, we, we, we have a lot of data, right? And, and we're, we're very data rich and information poor. So we're, I'm going to bring in the element of simulation and how do we take data and actually make, you know, turn that in, you know, turn it through technology to actually add value in decision making. How does simulation and optimization work together, complementary, when do you apply one versus the other? So um, it's a big talk about data and like, what do we do with all this data at our fingertips to turn it into something that actually adds value to an organization? So um, I'm on that with um, with Ben from uh, IBM. So we'll be talking. I'm not sure when, but sometime during the conference. <laughs> Do 
Do you want to boost your career in the engineering industry or make a career move? The online Master of Science in Industrial Engineering at the University of Louisville can expand your career opportunities in just 10 courses. The curriculum offers a broad range of courses across two in-demand focus areas with strong market growth potential, operations research and decision analytics, and logistics and supply chain. Grow your technical engineering skills, as well as business understanding, and prepare to lead a diverse team, all through convenient, on-your-schedule online courses. No GRE required. Lead in engineering. Sign up today at louisville.edu slash online. So for those that aren't familiar with the conference, there's 18 tracks that uh, they kind of have uh, different themes, right? There's logistics, there's all these kind of really specific to healthcare, whatever. And there's also a, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it. Uh, the one you're, you're on, Renee. Oh, the professional. Um, performance excellence track. Yeah. Performance excellence. Thank you. Yep. And mm-hmm. So that one is, uh, you know, going to be a highly attended one for those in industry. Um, but there's going to be presentations like the one Kaz and I will be on that'll be in a different track, right? So it's uh, it's 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 uh, kind of interesting and a, a way challenging thing to do is kind of figure out which there's a ton of stuff to go see and hear. It's it's always kind of a fun way to try to figure out what to go to and what to listen to. Do you guys have kind of a madness or a method to that madness of figuring out where you guys go and what you guys see? Because there's a ton of information at the conference. Yeah. How do you guys oh, yeah. how do you guys map your day? Oh uh, well, I'll, uh, so Doug Robinick again. We're IE, so we IE things, and uh, we faced that challenge before. So in the past, the IAB would kind of text each other of, "Hey, go to this, go to this, go to this." Um, but uh, what Doug did is Doug actually created a flyer that kind of highlighted all the, and this is biasing toward the industry with the, with what, what he felt was the, the highlights for an industry perspective. So I believe Doug or the IEB is planning on doing, repeating that again, mm-hmm. of creating a flyer that's specific around um, what, you know, best hits or best thoughts around uh, tracks and sessions that would be relative toward the industry. Of course, academia can, can go to it also, but we found uh, in the tracks that, that the industry audience has a different different expectation of something they can take back home to their, you know, their company to help justify things. While the academic side can be can be academic, it can be theoretical and such, which makes it uh, maybe a little more challenging to go back and tell your boss of what value that you're able to bring back to the organization. So this is a little cheat sheet, so we'll always use that. And then network events. I mean, it's always a highlight. Is, is I make sure that you know I'm always attending all the network events and and the banquet dinner and and uh, allowing time for that. Yeah, that, I think that's a good point, Kaz, because when you attend events like that, you can ask people you meet. So, you know, what are you looking forward to seeing tomorrow or what is your plan? Um, I think it's a tough thing, Jeremy, especially when you're brand new. But um, I think what I would do is I is I would look through, ti- of course, you start with titles, you know, with, with titles across the tracks interest me. I would focus on a track that maybe I want to I want to learn about. So for me, like modeling and simulation, but I also have a personal interest in like logistics, supply chain and manufacturing. So I might start with those and pick a few things. Not that I'm advocating jumping around, but one thing I didn't realize at first as a brand new attendee is that you it's okay if you go into the back of the room and then you need to leave. I think I think when the first year I attended, I felt very rude. Um, and again, I don't want to like encourage it, but if you get into a talk and it's not exactly what you wanted, you, you can sneak out the back and go to something else. So I think I'll just share that. Yeah, very true. So I know one of the things that uh, the program chairs early on wanted to, to drive uh, to the track chairs was this kind of theme around industry and academic um, collaboration. And so that is one of the things we're hoping that we can kind of identify, too, is when those collaborations happen. as some sort of way to, to let that be uh, a distinguishing fact, right, either in the app or in the, in the actual magazine that you get when you walk in the front door, right? So you can start to do a little more filtering on those things that where there is a kind of a collaboration of sorts. So you kind of talked about networking cause I think it's, I think, you know, that's, I think one of the things that a lot of people go there for, why, why, why is it important to be able to network and mingle? Uh, you know, for those that maybe don't think that the networking piece is important, what would you say to those folks 
Um, and, you know, why isn't it maybe important now more than ever with, uh, you know, being two years kind of in this hiatus where we actually have an opportunity to get back in person? Well, we are, we are, industrial engineering is a people engineering group. And we, uh, our value is that we understand people and, and we help people. Um, we often get put into a situation where we're the dumbest person in the room and yet we're supposed to figure it all out. And uh, it's very common that, that we end that, that when we leave that room, we are just, we're the smartest person in the room for that particular topic. Um, the, the value of, of networking uh, allows uh, get that, that, that more horizontal thing. The, the huge value of industrial engineers is that we think horizontally that uh, that's sort of larger, our horizontal plane is the more, value that we can provide. Um, I, you know, Jeremy, I know, you know, it's even though we're, we're pseudo competitors per se in, in the manufacturing world, but in the theoretical world, we're, we're like, we're advocates for each other. Um, uh, uh, Rupert Fernay uh, with their simulation experiences and such. And, uh, but on top of that, uh, Renee has, I've been blessed by having Renee as a guest host speaker on my panels, uh, talking about uh, leadership, roles and such and and having renee guest speak in my class and i can tell you that that was the highest rated classes that i taught i taught where renee was being very candid about uh, leadership and uh, and the challenges of being a female uh inside of a leadership position and it 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 was sincere and it changed a couple of my students lives they were they were just they they like was so thankful it was amazing so those are the type of things you get by networking and and there's the 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 other side for those who are new um who are looking for career changes is that you know that if you're if if jeremy is looking for another job in uh and out of manufacturing you know he has his his own initial clients and connections and he has extended stuff who would like right yeah, it's so you wind up expanding that that uh, all those opportunities of different people that you had no idea about. One of the things that I I think is uh, sometimes uh, <clears throat> challenging to do is how do you come across and not look like it's uh, kind of a job hunt, but it's more networking, right? Is there any etiquette that or things that you would recommend, say tips or tricks around that to do versus not to do, or understand what the people are doing. Uh, like, like understand them, understand that, like, uh, you know, a couple of them on my career with Disney, I uh, was, I uh, was, it was, uh, almost, how should I put it? Um, but it was almost awkward because, because, you know, I represented an amazing company that so many people wanted to join and they just, they want to, they just want to work there. So they sought, you know, me and others from Disney out for the sole purpose of how do I get a job here? And, and it became very we felt, we felt used. We felt like this is not, you know, I'm, I'm glad to help somebody, but for goodness sakes, you know, uh, you know, let's, let's have a, let me get to know you as opposed to how do I get a job at Disney? Mm-hmm. Because it's so this flat. So, so be, be polite and, and understand them, understand their talk. They, you know, why did you meet them? Under, understand what they, what value that they do to organization and, and, you know, don't, you know, you know, respect the person as opposed to going straight after, Oh, how do I get a job here? Is that that'll turn at least it turns me off. Yeah. I completely agree. And I and I think what you'll find if if for those people who want to attend because they're in the job market, it is it's a great reason to attend. But you'll find the companies that are hiring are gonna be very vocal about that, right? They're gonna they're gonna be out there. Um and they're gonna they're gonna be, you know, whether it's in conversations, whether it's in the exhibit area or whether it's just uh um I won't say names, but I remember someone who before every one of their talks would say, and by the way, did I say we're hiring? Do you guys, you guys know who I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And, um, and they'll, and so, you know, in that case, sure, you can be direct because they're being direct about their, their hiring needs. Um, and you might find that this year with the job market, right? I bet you're going to see a lot of that, but I agree with you cause I mean, it, otherwise just, um, just be authentic and, and start a, a conversation and a relationship. Yeah. Networking and, and get to know people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of companies that you might want to work for, it's, they may not have that job opportunity right now. Right. And so it is building that relationship. It's mm-hmm. kind of a called a long game, right? You, you, you need to have that kind of uh, rapport with the person before you go, Hey, I need a job. Right. You just mm-hmm. don't say, Oh, you do a job. Cool. 
I'll sign you up tomorrow. I'll, I'll send in a letter of referral. I don't know you, but yeah, let's do it. Right. So having built that uh, rapport the, and then having those conversations, it goes a long way is for sure. Oh, for sure. There's the one example. I just got a, uh, a, a message from one of the kids I was coaching. Uh, she was, she ran the Canadian IISC conference a while for several years ago. And we met at, a, we met at one of the conferences and she always wanted to work at Disney and kind of coached her along, but she kept in contact with me. It was about like, you know, what's going on in this. And, and it wasn't, it just, how do I go to job? She let me know she wanted a job, but it wasn't that direct. And she would, ping me every once in a while to see how is it doing, you know, not talking about getting a job or so just, just like what's going on in her career. And uh, she sent me a note a little while ago that she actually was hired by uh, in, our, in Orlando for our team. So that was, that was pretty cool for her. Renee, do you get many uh, requests for being a mentor at the annual conference? Probably about once a year, you know, and it starts with an organic conversation, you know, to yeah. cause point, just someone who I'm having a chat with, whether they just came up to me after, after a talk that I gave or maybe in a town hall um, or at a networking event. And then, and then afterward um, I've seen it happen to a couple of ways where it's more of just a follow-up email or a follow-up meeting where we organically get into this mentor mentee. But, but I've also had people ask me direct, right? Like, Hey, are you inter- I'm looking for a mentor. Like, are, are you know, where are you interested? And, and, and that's fine. Either way. I, I respect either way, either approach. I think the only thing I would say is, um, I appreciate, you know, getting to know the person a little bit just to make sure, you know, your personalities kind of jive and, um, and that, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities there. Do you get that too, cause where somebody else come up and say, I hear your cause and I, I want to be, I want to be mentored by, by the, by you, the smile yeah. guy or. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Groucho Marx that anybody wants to be social with me. I don't want any part of, um, <laughs> Um, uh, the, no, it's true. I, I, it's interesting. Majetta Bob, who was one of our past presidents and a dear friend of mine from Boeing. And, uh, we talked about mentorship and he actually was very adverse about that. And then we go, what's the big deal, Majed? And for him, he goes, people don't understand mentoring. He goes, we coach all the time, but we don't mentor. And I go, and I go well, well, how do you know the difference between coaching and mentoring? And, and Majed's simple answer was, do, they, do you know what scares them? And do they, do, they, do they know what scares you? And I was like, that was pretty deep. And he went, went on to talk about that when you have a mentor-mentee relationship, that is much deeper. It's like your best friend. You know what your best friend fears are and, and concerns are, and they know what you are, or yours are, and that's why you're best friends. So you you have each other's back. You can talk deeper about about situations, especially if I'm thinking about you know taking another job someplace else, or or I'm having an issue with with uh, this leader or this new project, and and it becomes much more. It becomes much deeper, and it's also restrictive. Um, uh, I would say that the true mentee mentor relationships that I have are probably about seven maybe eight uh, coaching. I do all the time and I'll talk to somebody for coaching, but then they leave. So that's not mentoring. If, if I, uh, they come in, they swoop in, we talk about it and then I never hear them again. That was never a mentor relationship. It's a really in- interesting distinguish, like distinguishing fact, right. Of kind of how deep you are calling out what a mentor is. I think that's interesting. So Renee, what, why do you think it's important to get back to the networking and uh, getting to know people when you go to the conference, the same same stuff or something different? Yeah, I, I mean, I think especially this year in particular. But you know, I get there and I might set out a goal for learning something new, or you know, I look at the talks. Like this this year, I'm really looking forward to some of the keynotes and some of the the panels, and that's my goal. But then I always come away with this other this energy. I don't know of of in excitement. Um, so. So I think that's what I'm looking forward to because you just don't get that same, you don't get the same connection. You don't get that same feeling when it's remote. At least I didn't. So I just look forward to, you know, the the interpersonal relationships and being energized by whatever, what I see everybody else doing in their careers, you know, hearing what they're doing, what they're working on at work, even, even some of the challenges, just because typically it turns into what challenge are you facing? And then you hear other people, you know, um, give some advice and, and that's just, that's great to see, right? Is people helping each other and kind of this brainstorming session. Yeah. Kaz, have you had any kind of a particular idea or process you kind of taken back at an annual conference and said, yeah, I can apply this? 
We we have there, there's one. It was actually a simulation model that uh, that uh, Renee didn't do. It was somebody else. Um, there was a, a concept on um, um, security. So it was interesting. Uh, it's like we can find different pieces, and they were talking about security, and they brought in. Um, the uh, uh, visual analytics, but visual analytics using cameras, and uh, and how they did for people counting, and and the, and again it was a security twist. But then for us counting people uh, is a, is a big deal. Uh, so like you know that utilizing that technology for that that was kind of that was kind of cool that we hadn't thought about before. But the security guys had that in their head. Interesting. You know, what I like to bring back to besides just like my last comment about the energy that that was more of a selfish answer. I apologize, but more, you know, from from a business perspective, is convergence of academia and industry that you mentioned earlier, Jeremy. Because at my company, we have two user groups, right? It's, it's industry customers, but it's also academia. You know, we're we're educating students on the use of simulation, and so we want to understand, you know, what are what are students learning? What are they? What are the different IE programs across the world teaching? Um, what you know, what kind of research is being done. And that's incredibly important for us to make sure that we're, we're there with our tool to help them, you know, supplement and, and use our tools to help with their research. So I, I also get value from that. Oh, that's a good point. I, I remember we have some memories of, I um, was sitting at lunch randomly with some students and they were all from, and everybody was from the same school. And and then I saw somebody from Purdue that I knew, and I brought them over. So then the lunch table turned into, uh, I think it was uh, um, you know, one of the uh, the Mexican schools and Purdue. And then I started asking them questions about, well, how would you? What do you? For example, um, uh, human factors. What do they teach you in human factors these days? Um, do you do time studies at all? Of like that. And one school goes, no, our professor feels that time studies is too old school, so I don't do that. And I'm going, oh, man, we, I use time studies all the time of some sort. So that was kind of a fun kind of chatting about how we benchmark each other from, a, from a, like an educational point of view. Mm-hmm. So have you guys, uh, have you guys been to Seattle before? I used to live there. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. So do you about, any recommendations uh, for the... years ago I did. Yeah. Um, oh, it's a great place. It's a great place. I'm really, really excited to get back. Um, so we're going to be, we're going to be downtown, which there's, you know, plenty of good shopping and eating. And my recommendation would be, we're not that far from um, South Lake Union. So um, it's a, that's where Amazon's HQ is now. But when I lived there, it wasn't, but it's still a great place. And so you can either walk there or take a little trolley. There's like a little streetcar from downtown and, um, and just sit. You can either just take a walk if the weather's nice, watch the seaplanes come and land and take off. Um, if you have extra time, there's, you can rent kayaks on South Lake Union. And that's really cool because you can kayak up in between the houseboats that are, that are there. Um, that, like the houseboat from Sleepless in Seattle was on that lake. So you can kind of kayak through there. Um, but I would say that, or of course, you know, your typical Space Needle is not very far from where we're going to be at. And there's a little, uh, a nice glass exhibit there, um, an art exhibit that's worth your time. So those are my recommendations. Kaz, have you been there? I was there a long time ago for a friend of mine's wedding. And and I've been in Vancouver. It was my son used to play hockey. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some of my buddies like Steve Snelling. So those of you know, anybody who's been yeah. around IISA knows Steve. And uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing him and and maybe getting a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, and and what maybe watching somebody throw a piece of fish to another person. Yeah, get coffee at Pike Place Market. Yeah, and then and then you can see the fish. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, do you guys? This might be a little too personal, but do you guys know when you're coming and going? Are you guys coming in Friday? Coming in Saturday? What's your plan? Uh, I'll come in on Thursday. Then, okay. yeah. And actually, I'm gonna probably. You know what? I'm gonna probably come in earlier than that because um, I'm interested of in looking at maybe a, uh, maybe buying another house in that area. Okay. So I got all my buddies up there. They go, for goodness sakes. You know, I'm told that the weather would cause me to have second thoughts because I live in, like, if I look out my window right now, that's not, uh, that I can see snow, there's snow on the mountains. And if you remember, like, last week, we we're at 85 degrees. So, you, you know, so it's California, you pay for that. But, but, uh, and there's sunshine. I understand like it's in Seattle that it's quite dark <laughs> now. So, I will not be buying a house. So, I will not be coming in. <laughs> 
necessarily. <laughs> um, but I, I do plan to arrive Friday night because I have um, there's different things on Saturday that I always enjoy at the conference. I, I think they're still in the works on this, but there, there's I've heard some rumors that there's going to maybe be a uh, chance to do some volunteer work Saturday morning. Either one of you guys know anything about that? I know they do it every year. I think it's a I think it's an annual thing, right? So where they, yeah. they find a local a local um, organization and and it's a combination of volunteering, um, like actually doing volunteer work, but then also providing a little bit of a IE spin on their process to say, Hey, you know, uh, if there's opportunities for improvement, you know, here's some ideas. Um, I don't know where it is this year, if they've scheduled it, but that's typically what happens. Yeah. I, I think I've heard that it's, uh, they're planning to do it, but it's still in the works. So I'm, I've never done it myself, but I've, I've heard about it after the fact. And I go, I, I wish I had known about that. So mm-hmm. I'm going to see if I can't, uh, do that this year. I'm going to fly in, I think Friday as well. And then, uh, it looks like it's a full day on Wednesday, on uh, Tuesday. Right. And so I'll be flying back on Wednesday. I always look forward to the IEB, um, uh, unsanctioned happy hour. That's always been my, my, one of my highlights. I agree. Well, I appreciate your guys' time. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, so, hopefully everybody that's been listening uh, got a little bit of uh, new information about the conference. And uh, yeah, we hope to see everybody in May in Seattle. And if you need to learn more information, uh, you can go to the isc.org website and uh, take a look at what uh, the program is going to be, volunteer activity there might be, and so on and so forth. So. Appreciate your guys' time. Well, thank you, Jeremy, for also leading us and being a being a chair for conferences is uh, no trivial task. So I'm sure you put in a lot of time to to try to make this a great event for for all of us. That completely on your own. Appreciate it, Cause. And I look forward to seeing everybody, but especially you, Cause, especially Jeremy. So see you in Seattle. All right, see you guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of Problem Solved, the IISC podcast, a production of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers in Metro Atlanta. This podcast is produced by David Brandt, Keith Albertson, and Michael Hughes, and edited by David Brandt. You can listen to all episodes of Problem Solved and learn about sponsorship opportunities by visiting our website, podcast.iise.org. You can also learn more about IISE at the Institute's website, www.iise.org.